I'm here at the European uh, Women Payment Network and I'm talking to Nelixa Devlukia. She's a regular payment expert and she works for the Open Banking Platform in the UK. We're going to talk about that about a second. But why are you here at the European uh, Payment Network? Um, I'm here because I think it's a great initiative. Uh, Martha and Nadia and colleagues have created this fantastic tribe of people that are collegiate, want to be supportive, share experiences and actually there's no other forum like it for women anywhere in Europe. Yeah, it just had to be there and it was long overdue. Well obviously it was because look at the number of people here who are supporting the event. Yeah, so it's, it's the second year. Yeah. yeah, found a gap in the market, yeah. filled that niche and actually met the needs of the women who are working in this industry. Yeah, and what are the needs of the women who are in this industry? So, oh gosh, that would be a very, very long list, but I think part of it is visibility. Um, you know, you can tell there's many women here. We see them here today because it's a special event, but actually if you go to a normal conference, many of those faces wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. So the questions come up, why are they not there? You know, is it because you know they don't want to be I don't think so they all turned up here so yep. they obviously want to be seen they want to be heard they want to have the profile um, and it was like Terry said this morning make yourself heard yeah. and sometimes I think that with um, the challenges that maybe women face or do face in the workplace you know there is that little bit of need to have confidence of putting your hand up and I think a forum like this helps support women to move forward and do that. Okay. How is it to be in a uh, in, in that to be in a room where only the women are there? I mean, and there's, there's a man here and there. It's amazing. Yeah. It is incredibly powerful to look out at an audience and actually think, oh, all these people look like me. You yeah. know, generally I speak at many events. I look out at an audience and the gender balance is probably not even 80 20. You come out of the regulator uh, world right uh, there is a lot of women there. Actually yes I think in the regulator environment um, there are many women and in the ones that I'm familiar with uh, the FCA and the EBA um, there is a really good gender split even often in favor of women um, and even at the FCA if you look up the structure there are senior women yeah. Um, and we've had um, a senior women as you know at the top role in the FCA in the past as well but I think if you look across organizations you don't see those role models at the top of the organizations well, we have the IMF oh absolutely you have the IMF who's just appointed a chief economist who's a woman as well ah. you know okay. um, but it's not just about in financial services is it no, it's across the board yeah. it's in every industry what role models do we want to have? How do we want to attract more talent, more female talent? And it was actually quite shocking to hear this morning some of the statistics that actually there are less females going into sort of the, the STEM roles and tech. And it's yeah. like, why is that? What is driving that? Because that's not what you would expect. Yeah. But that is, and, and on the other hand, I mean, if you go to law and if you go to medical, the women are uh, in the, the big majority everywhere. So they have higher education, they do better in education, they are better in university, they're better everywhere. They're also better in the first 10 years of their career, yeah. but then it tempers off. Yeah, they're definitely better at the exams, the yeah. results prove that. Yeah. And again, I think part of it is how um, work is structured. You know, right. brutally, to be honest, women have the babies, don't they? So they have to physically take time out. And I just don't think that the, the workplace environment, except in very progressive firms, yeah, accommodates that need. No. You know, you have a lot of the Nordics who, you know, have, I think, more gender balance in like parental leave and, and so sort of those sorts of initiatives. But I suppose, I don't know, maybe you only really get gender equality once men have babies. <laughs> okay, let's work on that. Secondly, about you. You are. Uh, you work for the industry. You work for the regulator. Now you're back into open banking. Uh, uh, what is it? An association or a platform or an API standard of PSD2 in uh, in uh, in UK? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of all of those. Um, so open banking is the uh, the open banking implementation entity is the organisation that was established by a competition and markets authority order that uh, the banks in the UK um, 
should open up access to their payment account data. Yeah. And so... Uh, and you are number one. I mean, the, P the UK was really very fast with PDS2. Eh? We were so slow in Holland, but you were very fast. Why is that? Well, part of it was this regulatory requirement that regardless of PSD2, you are going to deliver up access to account data. But that was all part and parcel of the government initiative for a digital economy, greater competition in financial services. Uh -huh. um, and then that order actually requires these banks to deliver PSD2 as well. Uh -huh. oh, so okay. you've got two regulations. You have open banking and you have PSD2 and that's basically the same. One comes from Europe, the one was already active. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And you, you make the technical specifications of how uh, somebody gets access to the, uh, the, to the, uh, the account? We make technical specifications for the API standards, but we also provide um, a very vibrant ecosystem for support, um, helping firms connect to each other, talk to each other, um, all of the OB standards that are actually published in the, do in the public domain yeah. are done with a vast amount of consumer engagement, um, stakeholder engagement of both starts of the industry. It's a very, very open system. Okay, so then you have two standards to compare. You have your own open banking standards and you have PSD2 or are they now the same? The, the technological aspect of this is one and the same. Okay. Open banking is helping the UK industry deliver to PSD2 requirements. Okay. Now, I have to ask you, I mean, what happened when you woke up and the Brexit was a thing? Were you thinking, oh my God, now I have to come up with my own standards and uh, now we have to let Europe go and uh, we can come up with a brilliant Europe, uh, U United uh, Kingdom standard? No, no, I, I can't even answer that question because I live in a no Brexit bubble. Okay, it doesn't exist in your world? It in my world at all, not happening. <laughs> You didn't wake up to the Brexit. Okay, good luck with that uh, integration of that, uh, that problem. Okay, so that is one of the women who is walking around here, the European Women Payment Network. All very interesting women who are doing very interesting things.